Sawadee Ka, I'm able welcoming you to Anima News on our program today, which is Friday, the October 7th. We follow with the severe weather affected by the floods as it recedes, and we also check the latest development plans for Patong. And finally, we have our weather forecast. But first, here is the local news. Patong resumed to normal yesterday after some parts faced severe floods on Wednesday. After facing floods on Wednesday, the Nanai Road in Patong on Thursday resumed to normal with staff from Patong Municipality seen cleaning and spraying the dirt out of the road. It was similar at Patong Hospital, which experienced over 30 centimeter high floods in front of the building and over one meter in the basement on Wednesday. But the situation improved and resumed to normal yesterday. The hospital director, Dr. Pumin Silapan, said they, however, did not remove the sandbags yet as they want to observe the situation until the weather improves. On the authority side, Phuket Vice Governor Som Kit Seng Kao Sutirak yesterday led related head officials to report affects Phuket felt from the storm and stressed that floods in Phuket usually occur for a short time as water drains slowly in such heavy rain. The head of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Office, San Chan Ta Wong, warned people in prone locations to keep following weather forecasts and news with information from the authorities or media. Meanwhile, owners of houses damaged by mudslides insist on rebuilding at the same location while the mitigation officials keep watch on every identified prone location. It has been four days since the wall of a house on a hill slope in Patong collapsed onto its neighbor's home and injured the man who needed 50 stitches. The owner still could not remove all the rubble due to rainfall. Sam Ong Yitsua, an owner of the lower house, which was damaged, admits that even though she is still fearful of the experience, she insists to live on there as the family has been residing in the house for the past 50 years. Meanwhile, the owner of the collapsed house, despite having to demolish the old house, insists that she will build or rebuild the new one on this plot of land. She said the incident occurred due to the extension of the house and heavy downpours, which the earth could not hold anymore. She believes that the location of this home is not landslide prone. The area in Banmon community in Patong is among one of the prone locations identified by the Provincial Office of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation. The mitigation chief, San Chan Ta Wong, states that Phuket has other 29 landslide-prone locations scattered around the island. These locations include the populated hillside community of Nanai along the 50-year road in Patong, which needs special watch. Other locations include Katu Waterfall, Kalim, and Karon. Many said they would like to see serious law implementation occurring concerning the construction on slopes or high hillsides and earth excavation. In Grubby, heavy rain might have caused sinkholes in Nong Tele of Mung District. A two by three meter sinkhole occurred at a villager's house in Nong Tele of Mung District in Grubby on Thursday. The house owner, 60-year-old Harun said while he was watching TV inside the house, he heard some sound, so he came out to look. He saw a large hole with one of his bricks benches falling down in there. He then notified the village headman to inspect the scene. The villager said they had been having heavy downpour for a few days before the incident occurred. They're waiting for a professional team to identify the cause and if proved to be a hazard, the owner may have to be evacuated. The head of Nong Tele Subdistrict Administration Organization, Sukai Chanan, said they would, they would landfill the hole to prevent any more submerge. 
He admits that after the earthquake and tsunami in late 2004, many sinkholes occurred in Nongtale area. On the other hand, Grapi deployed supplies caravan in support of flood victims. Trucks carrying supplies were deployed by CEO of the Grapi Provincial Administrative Organization, Som Sak Kititon Kun. The supplies and necessities were sent to six central provinces in the central region, which have been undated for over a month. The supplies are results of donations by public and private sectors in Grapi. They comprise rice, canned food, kitchen sauces, and woman necessities. Apart from the item, the Grapi Provincial Administrative Organization allocates 3 million baht from its own to another sum of over 1 million baht to acquire supplies in need to give to the flood victims. Back to Phuket, where the Royal Thai Navy 3rd Area Command at Cape Panwa got a new commander. Vice Admiral Tom Nong Adwong yesterday bid farewell to his post as commander of the 3rd Naval Area, the Royal Thai Navy at the headquarters at Cape Panwa. He is succeeded by Vice Admiral Tarathon Kajitsuan. The move follows Thai military's new appointment and reshuffle this month. Assuming the new post, Vice Admiral Tarathon said he would continue the 3rd Naval Area's mission in protecting national security along the Annaman Sea and make sure that no narcotic drug smuggling activities take place in the Annaman Sea. Phuket Authority is gathering data in support of the establishment of the International Convention and Exhibition Center to present to the Environmental Board. Phuket's governor, Tri Akarade Cha, on Monday called a meeting with a local working committee to work on data gathering and rational to justify the development of the International Convention and Exhibition Center. The meeting comprised officials and local government leaders plus private sectors. The meeting followed the Environmental Board's comments over the plan to build the International Convention Center on Maikau Beach, saying that the location is not suitable. The board cited four issues to justify their disapproval. The four issues are, first, the Maikau Beach location where sea turtles come up to lay eggs. Second, the forest there is still fertile. Third, the deep bay there is valuable to natural disasters which may affect surrounding environment. And fourth, the worthwhileness of the project. The governor assigned Maikau Subdistrict Administrative Organization to explain and justify such issues and pass on to the Office of Treasury before setting up for the National Environmental Board. Representatives from the tourism sector, Tosapon Tepaput and Borit Madwongsa, insisted that the International Convention and Exhibition Center is worth investing as it would boost tourism for Phuket, Panga, and nearby provinces, as well as attracting mice or meeting incentive convention and exhibition markets. You agree? Correct. Yes, in the location wise, you know, it's good for by the conveniences of the three provinces can be utilized, the facilities together from Panga can be in Phuket. And also, this uh, matter of theory, they already passed the public hearing and all the studies, feasibility studies, and all uh, step of the, the construction already. And it's just one of the, the I can say that it's. Uh, People not agree with the, the solutions of the, the committee has come out with that kind of reason, which is mm, not cheerful at all for us. And also, mice and business could be get along well with the leisure tourism. So business leisure can be part of the tourism as well in this world aspect. So I believe that it uh, could be modified into some other other form of the business leisure.
for the tourism industry to gain more profits and more uh, mice business in Phuket. And now we will take a short break and come back with more news, including comments from the deputy mayor in Patong about local developments. So please stay tuned. <music> Thai silk, product of the true nature, from the heart and soul of Thai creation. The never-ending change from the true nature, impressiveness and priceless. The beauty lasts forever. Thai culture can change the everything to surprise the world. Creative Thailand can change the world for the better. In 2015, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, will become an ASEAN community comprising three pillars, namely a political security community, an economic community, and a socio-cultural community. The ASEAN community aims to strengthen regional integration in all aspects. ASEAN, one vision, one identity, one community. Welcome back. The second dinghy series is set to take place at Nayang Beach during October 15th through the 16th. After a successful first series that took place during September 17th to the 18th at Saracen Bridge, the second dinghy series of races is set for October 15th to the 16th at Nayang Beach. The first series of Phuket Dinghy Series 2011 saw a growing fleet of 23 optimists and 9 lasers battling in the Anaman waters. Entries were from Phuket, Panga, Songkla and Satahip of mixed levels, ranging from 6-year-old beginners to 14-year-old advanced sailors. The fleet learned basic racing rules, tactical sailing, negotiating title conditions under close supervision of Commander Pon Prom and a professional team. The series comprises three races each day, six races per series, and a total of 18 races over three series in different condition of sailing areas. At Nayang Beach, the fleet will learn to ride waves of the Anaman. Phuket Dengi Series was introduced in 2010 as part of Phuket King's Cup Regatta to, pr to, re to promote excuse me, the sailing sports among the youth in Phuket and greater southern provinces. The format of the race is series races of a minimum three weekends, constituting 18 races over different sailing conditions around Phuket. Progressive coaching is provided as part of an extended briefing and debriefing under close supervision of experienced ex-national team sailors. <laughs> <laughs> 